Good morning and welcome to Friday Morning Prayer on this beautiful spring morning. And it's good to welcome so many of you and to our dear Jan who's logged in and those who've not logged in, welcome. If you have a candle handy, why not light your candle with ours and release a powerful light from this beautiful cathedral of God where there is so much sadness at this moment in time, especially with terrorism and fundamentalism. So we light this light to commemorate the children of God of all faiths and none who are willing to surrender their heart to a loving God, who are willing to let go of unforgiveness, anger, apathy, fear, desolation, or anxiety. So we call, we call on the Lord Christ in the presence of all the great spiritual teachers and the beloved ascended masters in the company of the angelic realm and especially in the presence of Michael, the Archangel Prince. So we begin by calling on the Spirit of God to guide my heart, to read what I am given for your heart. And now we begin with the Friday morning prologue of our brother and sister Essenes of Mount Sinai, as we say together, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Friday morning we commune with the angel of air saying, angel of air enter my lungs and give the air of life to my whole body. As you say this, you contemplate on the atmosphere around you as you connect with the rhythm of your breathing. Before going live, I was just picking up the Celtic Daily Prayer Book to see what was the reading for the 24th of March. And it immediately guided me to the late Oscar Romero. So I want to share with you a little about this great Archbishop Oscar Romero who was murdered by terrorists while saying Mass in El Salvador and it's his feast today. Romero was a safe appointment at, of, as Archbishop of El Salvador. He was a conservative and a religious man, unlikely to align himself directly with the poor in a country on the brink of civil unrest and political turbulence. But the murder of a Jesuit priest and the army opening fire on a peaceful protest gathering soon made him take sides and become identified with the oppressed. He urged his priests to shelter anyone in terror of their lives. He moved out of his palace and lodged at a cancer hospital for the poor. He began his sermons by reading the names of the murdered and the missing. He condemned the use of violence in pursuit either of justice or self-interest. He spoke out against the institutional violence of economic oppression. For three years he was a voice for the voiceless and then he was shot while saying mass. The gospel of the day read, if a seed of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it will bear much fruit. A newspaper released a message he had already prepared for this eventuality. I often, sorry, I have often been threatened with death, but as a Christian, I do not believe in death without resurrection. If they kill me, I shall rise again in the Salvadorian people, a witness of hope in the future. 
So today we celebrate the life and the legacy of a truly great modern day martyr, Archbishop Romero. And we pray this morning, especially for what happened recently the other day in London at the Palace of Westminster, where a, where a young policeman gave his life to protect 400 plus MPs in the Houses of Parliament. And there have been five deaths in total, but many injured. And of the many, there are 20 now who are fighting for their life, of whom are three young school children from France, from Brittany, and there are others from Japan and, uh, and one from Germany. So we pray today, today is Friday, it's a holy day for our brother and sister Muslims when they come to pray to Allah. So we pray today for a reawakening within the hearts of all religions that God is a God of love not terror, that God is a God of peace, not violence. So let us be still as we come into the presence of God. Right, I'm guided now to pick up the book Psalms now by Leslie Brandt and to read to you today the psalm for today, which is 106. How I praise God today. How exciting it is to be his son and servant. What is so amazing to me is the manner in which he makes hay out of the straw and stubble of my feeble efforts and foolish errors. This is the way God deals with all his children. We have so often fallen away from his love and accepted his gifts without respect or concern for the giver. We spout with gratitude when some great deliverance has come our way. A successful surgery, a return to health, a financial bonus, a debt erased, a, re a reconciliation with a loved one. But when the crisis is over and calm is restored, we are back to our old tricks, walking in our old ways, pursuing our self-centered goals with little concern about God's way and will for our lives. We rejoice when God smiles upon us and sound off about how good and gracious God is. But when we meet up with hard times or become enslaved within the boredom of the daily routine, we relapse into grumbling and griping and act as if God were a million miles away. How loving and how patient is my God. Even when I fail him, he never fails to love and care for me. I so often limit him by my inability to really trust him, my unwillingness to obey him, by my apathy and my self-concern, or my pursuit of the foolish goals and ambitions of this life. And yet, my God, never ceases to pursue me, to draw me back into his circle of love and to carry out his purposes, even through the failures and defeats of my life. How I praise God today, how I pray that he may find pleasure in my love for him. Oh. I know I've read these psalms over and over and over for the best part of 45 years, but this morning this one is singing, like the dawn chorus when I was out walking the dogs at 7 a.m. Oh, it just is. I pray it's touched your heart. It certainly touched mine. 
So let us just stay with those words and ask ourselves this morning, is my heart close to God? In our thought for today, interestingly, it focused on that. It focused on letting go. Let me read it to you. This is the time in your life when you must learn to let go. To let go of loved ones, of possessions, of control, and in order to let go of something that is precious to you, you need to rest in my presence where you are complete. Take time to bask in the light of my love. As you relax more and more, your grasping hand gradually opens up, releasing your prized possessions into my care. You can feel secure even in the midst of cataclysmic changes through awareness of my continual presence. The one who never leaves you is the same one who never changes. I am the same yesterday I am the same today, and I will be the same forever. As you release more and more things into my care, remember that I will never let go of your hand. Oh, wow. Herein lies your security, which no one and no circumstance can take from you. That was our thought for today. So just for a few moments, let us come into the presence of God, the God of many names, and let us allow our God speak to our hearts this morning. Is he saying to you, relax in my presence? Could he be saying to you, why are you locked in a mindset of stubbornness of heart? unforgiveness, fear, anxiety, oppressiveness. Could you be saying, you spend a lot of time watching TV and texting friends, but how about texting me and reading my emails to your heart? Well now, let us ask the Christ to speak to your heart. What is he saying? Well, he's saying to me right now, come unto me, all you who labor and who are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. Wow.
bless me in my body, bless me in my coming Jesus, and in my going. Lord, we come to you this day and we say thank you from our hearts for all that we receive from your love. We thank you for those times that we refer to as the dark night of the soul when we feel and sense that you're very far from us and where everything seems to be eating away at our inner peace. We bless that, but we bless you for the words you've shared so far with us this morning where you will never leave us and all you ask of us is to let go and to allow you be God in our life. So we pray this morning for all gathered here, for dear Jan, and for those who've not logged in, for our many friends on social media, for Julia, for Skip, Thomas Aquinas Q, for Caroline on the Isle of Wight, for Sister Veronica Paul on Twitter, for all our Franciscan brothers and sisters within the Christian family, especially Brother Paul Gordon and Brother Paul, the founder of the Franciscan Hermits, for Brother Bjorn from the Servants of Peace Monastery. I pray to you today for the brothers and sisters in our community, especially those who are struggling with serious illness, for dear Sister Jane in Coventry, for Sister Jackie, in Idaho and despite her chronic pain from ongoing fibromyalgia bless our heart she created a Facebook page just for our community and friends as a closed group so that we can share with one another and maybe Jan will be able to share some of our beautiful music with members of the community who don't know a lot about what you do or have done but we pray today <clears throat> for Nancy and her project in Mexico of working with the poorest of the poor. And I really mean poor of the poor. So we pray for dear Nancy, who's 78 and yet a spring chicken and a beloved sister of our community. For dear Elaine and Peter Lee and for her poorly mom for Brother Liam in London and the great work he does with the homeless at Shelter. We pray for Brother Matthew and his family in Texas. And how could we forget our amazing Brother Brian, our Franciscan trucker, who brings so much love of God and Francis to the homeless he meets whilst driving from north, south, east, west of America. For our beloved sister Miriam in New Zealand, whom we love dearly. For, for dear sister Eleanor in Philadelphia and dear Buffy in New York. And there are many more that we could pray for, but we just bring all our community and we bring our hermits who've given their life to solitary living for unity and peace. And who don't go on the internet because they've disconnected from the world. We remember them. We remember our spiritual leaders, especially those who do let the light of peace shine through their life, through their smile and their joy. And I'm referring to His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Wow, what a man, a man I love and respect. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and I loved it when I read that a little boy pulled his little skull cap off and he smiled at him, showing the humanity of God in Pope Francis. And of course, for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, our reigning monarch, whose heart is troubled today because of those who were killed needlessly by that terrorist on Wednesday. We pray for all the men and women of all faiths who've dedicated their lives to God, to Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, Krishna, Vishnu, Ganesh, and the Lord Buddha. We pray today 
for our brothers who are incarcerated in a prison in Iran, 16 brothers and sisters from the Baha'i faith who are being tortured because they're of the Baha'i faith. We pray for the children of God who say they love God, but who inflict violence from their mouth, from their heart, and from their sword on the children of God. We pray for the divisions within the Christian family, as well as within Islam and Judaism. Abraham's children are killing one another. Why? We pray today for our young people, many of whom have disconnected from living in this world where many take drugs, illicit drugs, like spice, and where many young people from around England are traveling to Manchester for this deadly drug that leaves them walking zombies. We pray today for those who've given up hope, who've lost hope. We pray for the homeless. We pray for our servicemen and women who've retired from the forces but now living rough on the streets because they can't cope with their demons and the horrors of war, for migrants, for refugees who are being treated like cattle and not as human beings, for those who abuse this beautiful cathedral of God and desecrate it with their rubbish and their vile tempers and bad language, who have no respect for themselves and no respect for you or me or this sacred planet Earth and not even for the animal kingdom, God's little creatures. I pray for dear sister Corazon de los Santos, a third order Franciscan in Winnipeg, Canada, and her son Daniel and her brother Faustian and the many the many, many, many who ask for help via email. And for Noreen, our neighbor, who's doing really well. Thank you, God. So let us now, for a moment in silence, come into the presence of your God. And let your God touch your heart just experience the healing touch of God, release you from all negativity and fear today, so that you can join me in celebrating your love of God. Sister Jane sent to us from Coventry when my brother Shamey was very ill and thank the Lord he's out of danger and doing really well despite still being hooked up for sound with all the drips and stuff but he's doing really well so I thank you for your prayer but this is what Sister Jane sent me may I humbly offer this prayer to you and your family thy name is my healing O oh my God and remembrance of thee is my remedy. Nearness to thee is my hope, and love for thee is my companion. Thy mercy to me is my healing and my succor in both this world and the world to come. Thou verily art the all-powerful and bountiful, the all-knowing and the all-wise. And these words are from the founder of the Baha'i faith, Bahula. Aren't they beautiful? So let us now pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us gathered here this morning our daily bread. Forgive us our disobedience, our selfishness. Forgive us for the times when we have wronged you in thought, word or deed towards our neighbour. For when we've abused your gift of love, lead us not astray, O Lord, but protect us from the forces of evil, negativity, despair and despondency. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And for our closing prayer, I want, I'm guided, I've just been guided to pray for you the fourfold Franciscan blessing. May God bless you with a restless discomfort about easy answers, half-truths and superficial relationships so that you may seek truth boldly and love deep within your heart. May God bless you with a holy anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that you may tirelessly work for justice, freedom, and peace among all God's people. May God bless you with the gift of tears to shed with those who suffer pain, rejection, starvation, or the loss of everything that they cherish, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and transform their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that yes, you really can make a difference in this world, so that you are able, with God's grace, to do what others claim cannot be done. And the blessings of God our Supreme Majesty and our Creator, who with Jesus the Christ, our mentor, our brother, our friend, the incarnate Son of God, who with the Holy Spirit, our advocate and guide, be with you this morning and throughout this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for touching the hearts of all we have prayed for here and for honouring your word that when we call on you, you will hear us. So thank you, Jesus, for blessing all of us with your peace this day. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum, om shanti. Sola di Caritas, Salam Alaikum, and may the peace of all that is sacred to you reawaken in your heart to let go of everything and anything, anyone and everyone that holds you back in your search for spiritual intimacy with God. Amen. If this is your bedtime, sleep well. But if it's your daytime, like here, Ah, oh, get out into the cathedral of God and enjoy till we meet again. Blessings.